Hey everyone, so today we're going to calculate covariance on stock returns. So just like in our last video, we're pulling your data from Quando. And today we're going to just be looking at the two tickers today, Apple and Tesla. And we've outputted a new data frame here called Pivoted, but we've modified that data frame by applying a percentage change on it. So our new data frame is the percentage daily returns on these two tickers. So it's called DF for data frame. So let's try to understand what is covariance and how why is it important. So covariance is a measurement of a relationship between two types of variables. And we can interpret covariance in three ways. It can be either negative, zero, or positive. When covariance is negative, the returns on one asset um, tends to be above its expected value, while the returns on another, another asset is below its expected value. When the covariance is zero, the returns are unrelated. When the covariance is positive, the returns on both assets tend to be on the same side of their expected values at the same time. So let's break this down and see if we can calculate this. So covariance and variance. First, let's look at variance. If you remember in our last video, we talked about variance and how we took the deviation from the average and we squared it. But when you square something, all you're really doing is you're taking the deviation from the average multiplied by the deviation from the average. If we look at covariance, we're doing the same thing it's just that we're taking the deviation from some average and multiplying it from the deviation of an average of an entirely different data series. So instead of multiplying it by itself, we're multiplying it by an entirely different data series. So if we look at, for example, our Apple prices here, we are finding the deviation for each of these values minus the average multiplied, finding the cross by from the deviation of this value times the average of all these other values. So let's calculate this in Python. So all we got to do here is we're going to, first we're going to take we're going to need to find x bar here, both of these. So we're going to say the mean of Apple, we're going to find the average is just equal, equal to our data frame. And we're going to look at our Apple column and apply the dot mean function like so. So I'll just output this and there we go. We have our mean of Apple. We also need to find the mean or average for Tesla. So to do that, we're going to say mean of Tesla is just equal to our data frame Tesla column dot mean. There we go. We have the mean of Tesla. I'll put that. So now we just need to find the deviations from these means for each of these values. So to do that, we're going to take, we're going to create a new column here and we're going to call this deviation from Apple. And this is just going to be equal to our Apple column. And we're going to just use the dot apply function again. And we're going to say lambda x. And again, what this is doing is, is for each value of x in our column, we're going to apply a function to it. So we're going to say x minus the mean of Apple. That is our function that we're, we're applying. And so we'll run that. And there we go. So all we did is for each value in this column, we applied this function. We took x minus the mean of Apple, which we just calculated. So now we have this new column called deviation of Apple. We're going to do the same thing for... Um, our Tesla, we're gonna just say, take our, we're gonna create a new column here, Tesla. And that's just gonna be equal to our data frame Tesla column. And we're gonna apply the same function, lambda x. And we're gonna say for each value of x in this column here, we're gonna subtract it from the mean of Tesla. And we'll output this like so. And there we go, we have a new column where we just took the deviation from the mean for Tesla. Finally, if we look back here, we have our terms. We just need to multiply these two terms. So to find the cross product. So to do that, we're going to call this a new column called cross product. And that is just equal to our data frame deviation of Apple column, APL, multiplied by the deviation from Tesla column. And that should work. It does. So there we go. We took the cross product. So all we did was we just took the deviation of Apple column multiplied by the deviation of Tesla. So we have these two terms here. What we need to do now, what is the summation sign saying? It's saying we need to add these up, add all these values. So to do that, all we're going to do is we're going to just take the cross product column. That's some. And there we go. So we have the numerator in our covariance function. So all we need to do now is just divide it by the degrees of freedom, n minus 1. So to do that, we'll just do it on the same line here. We're just going to say, and we can take any column here, but I'm just going to take the cross product column. And I'm going to say dot count. 
minus 1. And there's our covariance. So we can always do this. There's always an easier way to do this in Python and Pandas. So what we're going to do is all we can do is just take our data frame. And we're going to look at our apple column. And we're going to say dot .cov for dot .covariance. That's our covariance function. And get our Tesla column. Pf .tesla. Run that. And we should get the same exact value. And we do get the same exact value. So that is covariance. If you like this video, please subscribe. In our next videos, we're going to talk about correlation and finally figuring out how this all relates to the portfolio variance and building an optimal portfolio.